So Neil had a scholarship from the Navy, and he, I think he had a very limited number of places he was checking out because he was coming here to study aeronautical engineering, definitely something with the future of flight and space. And he also seemed to really um, identify with being an engineer, and I think Purdue's strengths in those areas probably really spoke to him. Purdue has such a history with flight going back to having the very first university-owned airport in 1930. He was looking at a couple of different places and he went to a Purdue football game and the excitement, the thrill of the game, just the, the feeling of school spirit, that that sort of cinched Purdue as his school. Neil got his pilot's license before he got his driver's license, so when he came to Purdue, he flew in to the Purdue airport. In 2008, we drafted a letter to all of the living astronauts and and the families of the deceased ones. We would love to have your papers represented here. And the first ones to respond were Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, Eugene Cernan, the last man to walk on the moon at that time, and then of course Jerry Ross, who's done the most missions of all of our astronauts. So we immediately had great response. Neil Armstrong and his wife Carol were visiting campus. He made it clear that we needed to give him a good argument for why his paper should come here over other institutions. As we spoke with him about how students would have access to his papers, he just lit up. You could tell that that was what mattered to him, that he might be able to help future students at Purdue. You could tell that this was a decision that he arrived at carefully. And he basically said when he made that decision that this was to inspire future students at Purdue. It was clear that this was a partnership decision. He really valued his wife's opinion. That really turned out to be very insightful because later after Neil passed away in 2012, the, by far the bulk of the collection came as a result of his widow Carol contacting us. We only had at that time maybe eight boxes, and now we have about 400. And that's because after he passed away, Carol called our dean of libraries and said, I'm worried about all this stuff we have in the house and the garage. Would you send someone out to look at it and take what you want? And that's an archivist's dream. He kept everything. So the Neil Armstrong papers are comprised of mostly all of his working documents. Everything from when he was a student, actually, at Purdue, like we have his student notebooks, some of his textbooks, all the way through his entire career at NASA and beyond. So there's papers, reports, uh, photographs, lots of photographs, recordings, fan mail. He kept all of his fan mail. So it's a really diverse collection, but it's a research collection. It's not a lot of objects, but there are some objects in the collections. For example, there's a model of the lunar lander that a contractor made. There's a Rose Bowl football from 1967 when Purdue went to the Rose Bowl. So one of the items that I always pull out when we have students come is Neil's report cards from Purdue. They start to notice that in Calculus II, he got a C and they light up because they realize Neil was not like perfect. We have two of Neil's model airplanes he built. We have his geology collection. So we have some star charts, we have a slide rule, we have maps. So there were weather maps, lunar surface maps. We also have a Purdue centennial flag that Neil was given to take to the moon. It's a 1969 Purdue centennial flag and that was given back to the university when Neil returned and received an honorary doctorate. Now here we are in the 150th year of Purdue. It's the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 and we have this, this symbolic item, this flag, that's a pretty, pretty great part of the collection. We're so fortunate to have Neil's papers here at Purdue. They're a great resource for students and for faculty, but it's also like it's a responsibility. We have Neil Armstrong's papers and there's a lot of interest outside of academia. These are the materials that really let a scholar, a PhD student, an undergraduate see what the day-to-day -day was like for a human being who was involved in the endeavors of flight and space exploration. We've worked with faculty to integrate units that allow the students to use Neil's papers. So one student compared how Armstrong dealt with publicity, celebrity, in comparison with other astronauts. 
a first-year student in visual and performing arts turned her paper into an article for Quest magazine. The, the patches he helped create. Several wrote on Armstrong as pilot of the Gemini 8 mission to dock with the Magina rocket in preparation for what came later. One student wrote on Armstrong's piloting of the lunar module. Students who are writing papers on spacesuit, they're looking back and seeing what was the process that the pioneers of spacesuit development were going through. They can see reports, memos about what was working in the spacesuit, what wasn't working, the concerns both the astronauts had, the engineers had, and so it gives students a taste of what it's like to really work in that world. And it makes them curious, and it makes them appreciate what you can learn from looking back as you're trying to go forward, because I think that's very important, that we don't repeat our mistakes or <laughs> that we learn from those who came before us.